Welcome to Catching Up with Vet Candy, where we're revolutionizing the way you see veterinary medicine. From groundbreaking discoveries to inspiring stories, we're here to empower the future of animal health. I'm Dr. Alon Armstrong. And I'm Dr. Shannon Gregoire. Today, we're bringing you the stories that are shaping the veterinary world. So get ready to be inspired because we have the hottest news for you. finalized the curriculum for its newly created veterinary professional associate position, a groundbreaking role aimed at addressing the national shortage of veterinarians. However, despite its approval by voters in 2024, the position has sparked widespread opposition from veterinary professionals who question the adequacy of its training and its potential impact on animal care. The VPA role is designed to be an intermediate position between a veterinary technician and a veterinarian with professionals in this role expected to perform some medical procedures under veterinary supervision. Colorado State University has developed the curriculum, which includes three semesters of online coursework, a hands-on lab semester, 416 hours of in-person training, and a clinical internship, including 540 hours in a veterinary clinic. The program will initially focus on small animal care, dogs and cats, and graduates will be required to pass a credentialing exam before practicing. However, the Department of Regulatory Agencies, or DORA, is still determining the specific scope of practice for VPAs, meaning their exact responsibilities are still under review. Despite efforts to ensure VPAs are well-trained, the program has received strong opposition from organizations like the Colorado Veterinary Medical Association and the American Veterinary Medical Association. Critics argue that the compressed educational timeline does not adequately prepare VPAs for the complexities of diagnosing, treating, and performing surgical procedures on animals. Concerns include limited hands-on experience. The ABMA warns that VPAs would be performing critical medical tasks with significantly less training than veterinarians. Increased liability for veterinarians. Supervising veterinarians would bear full legal responsibility for any errors made by a VPA. Resistance within the profession. A survey found that 95% of veterinarians in Colorado oppose the creation of this VPA position, and 93% said they would not hire one. While the CVMA initially opposed the proposition, it now encourages veterinary professionals to help shape regulations to ensure the role is properly structured and implemented. In response to ongoing concerns, Colorado lawmakers have introduced the Veterinary Workforce Requirement Bill, which aims to set clear restrictions on what VPAs can and cannot do. If passed, the bill would require that VPAs only perform procedures within their training, experience, and competency. All delegated veterinary medical tasks will comply with state and federal laws. VPAs work on-site with a supervising veterinarian at all times. Informed consent is obtained from pet owners before a VPA provides treatment. Whether seen as a practical solution to a veterinary shortage or a risk to animal health, the VPA position is set to reshape Colorado's veterinary landscape. The coming months will determine the extent of its impact and how it's received within the profession. So that's it for today's show. Thank you so much for watching. Want to keep up with the latest? Follow us at MyVetCandy. Bye. Bye.